So smoothing groups in Blender um, are sharp and unsharp edges, as they're called. Uh, this is something that uh, that sort of tripped me up at first, coming from Max. Um, Max's smoothing groups it is unique in that there's no other 3D applications that use similar. They all use hard and soft edges. So you just mark your edges as hard or soft, and the surface shading is applied depending on those hard soft edges so you can do that in more recent versions of max as well but um, i still use the smoothing groups method so i'll press 7 to go into top view and shift a and i'll just create a cylinder and g to move z and then hold control just snap it onto the grid so by default blender creates its objects with flat shading so no shading at all whereas max by default primitives are created and they have smoothing groups already applied with an auto smooth angle threshold so the first thing you can do here is just right click and with your object selected and you can see here shade smooth and shade flat so it's shaded flat at the moment so if we smooth shade it it's just going to um, give it um, the equivalent of a single smoothing group in max auto smooth is over here um, on object data, normals and auto smooth is here so I've enabled auto smooth now and the angle by default is 30 so this works as expected and the same as in max um, and you can see then I can go to shade flat and then the auto smooth it doesn't matter because it's shaded flat and back to shade smooth so at first when I started to use planner this was one of the things that used to drive me mad and it seems so simple now but at the time it just my brain was still wired up to max's um, smoothing groups and the amount of control you have over them the way you can apply i think up to 32 different smoothing groups uh, per face but the hard shot soft edges thing i never really liked in other applications but it's actually quite straightforward here in blender and um, so the auto smooth is for just most um, hard surface kind of situations oh, so i'm going to bump this all the way up to 180 and you want to do this then if you're going to control your your edges um, by manually um, adding sharp edges so I'm just going to tab into edit mode and um, before I do that actually I'll, um, I'll shade flat tab into edit mode three for faces and you'll see here that if I select a couple of faces here and right click you still have this um, shade smooth and you might think oh well, that's grand it's it's the same as Max's smoothing groups I can just apply these uh, apply it to faces rather than edges but that's not the case because as I say you don't have that deeper level of control of smoothing groups they have in max where you can actually um, apply them by numbers to different groups so I'll just smooth shade again into edit mode and two for edge mode and now if I select an edge loop here and right click you can see here we've marked sharp and clear sharp so if I mark that as sharp now tab back out of edit mode and um, it's behaving as we'd expect and i'll do the same here uh, mark sharp and that's basically how it works and you can see now this kind of cyan colored um, indication here on, on, on the sharp edges and if you go up here um, you can see here you can display all this stuff in the viewport and um, i've talked about these in a different video but creases is for subdivision um, works the same as creasing and open subdiv and max sharps are these um, smoothing group sharps uh, bevel can be used with the weights and for the bevel modifier and then seams is your uv seams so you can see here you can mark um, seams as well so if i select an edge and uh, mark seams but this is that's very different sort of and then it displays them as well in the different colors you can customize these colors for the bevel weights uh, seams creases and sharps so i'll just undo that so this is the basics and marking them manually here overrides um, this 180 so usually that's the workflow you just set that to 180 if you're not using auto smooth by angle threshold um, and you want to manually mark some that's how you do that so i'm just gonna turn off the display for these sharps or i'll leave it on actually just to demonstrate this and three and I'm just going to select some faces here and E to extrude and you can see now that um, newly created geometry inherits or receives these marked sharps so you'd still need to go in here and um, 
and then mark these ones sharp as well but the difference is that in max newly created geometry by default has no smoothing groups assigned so um, you know it'd still be faceted um, so i'll just select the remainder of these and i'll just and just mark them as sharp as well and tab back out of edit mode and now you can see how that's been applied so i'll tab back into edit mode and i'm just going to go three select the face and i to inset E to extrude and then S the scale E to extrude and you can see that it's inheriting these um, sharp edges as it goes where in max all this geometry newly created geometry would have no smoothing groups and you'd have to manually go in and set them so so that's basically it I'm just gonna A to select all edges and then just um, sorry I go into edge mode too and clear all those sharps just to go back to um, a single smoothing group as it would be in max so just to show one or um, handy feature here so you don't have to always manually select all these just go back into edit mode and select and select sharp edges and i'll just deselect first and select sharp edges and now it's going to select all the edges based on you can see in the model here um, this little pop-up and the angle here so then you can adjust that before you apply and um, so it's I go up and do that again select sharp edges and then you can come down and mark sharp and now you can see that we retrieved all those and that's pretty much it um, in a nutshell you have your auto smooth and then your manual marking your sharps and um, then the bevel modifier you can mark your um, your bevel weight so um, where is it up into item and you can see bevel weights here so if you select all those you can you can set this bevel weight to one and then if you add a bevel modifier and then you can set that to weight sorry i didn't have those edges selected so um, i'm just gonna turn off this um, sharp display and um, edges are selected sorry that's the vertices um come down here to edges and then once i bring those weights up um, you can see that uh, you can either set your bevel to weight or angle which in this case is the same um, because we have that 30 degree angle the same angle that selected all of these edges that were hard because this is a basic sort of object with um, 90 degree angles everywhere so it's going to be using them um, you know a, a pretty standard angle threshold and um, you can see now the bevel angles sorry the bevel indicators here um, are also visible in the viewport so you can turn them on or off as well as i said earlier on and um you know that's that's pretty much it there just bump that up and our normals yeah so i'm going to leave it at that quick video um, and it just shows you you know it's a, it is a pretty straightforward workflow and hopefully you won't have to go through the same frustration that nearly made me not want to continue with blender but uh, thankfully i persevered all right then i'll leave it at that cheers thanks good luck